All right, so the numbers are finally in, and they are, in a word, game-changing. Whoa. Okay, so that's two words, but this is a big deal. In light of the most normal political week of all time, Team Kennedy would like to pile it on today with some incredibly staggering polling data. Now, the quick preface here is that we wanted to test where people stood after they heard Bobby's message from himself, as opposed to the media's version. The poll was meant to be private, but the results were so interesting, we have to share. Let's get into it. Zogby Strategies just released a poll with over 1,300 respondents and a margin of error of just 2.8%, so very solid data. In a head-to-head -head matchup between President Trump and President Biden, it's essentially 50-50. So no surprise there. In a head-to-head -head matchup between Vice President Harris and President Trump, it's again, pretty close to 50-50, with Harris doing a few points worse than Biden. So again, no surprise there. But in the head-to-head -head matchup between President Donald J. Trump and Robert F. Kennedy Jr., Kennedy wins by a whopping 14 points, 57 to 43. This would be a landslide victory for our first independent president since George Washington. Democrats, Republicans, Libertarians, Green Party, we all would unite under a Kennedy administration. Let's compare this to another Zogby poll from April. It had Kennedy barely ahead of Trump, but still winning. So these numbers suggest that since that horrendous debate, Kennedy is surging. So why isn't the media covering this? Why are they still saying that this is a race between two people? To answer that properly, we have to go all the way back to 1992. Can you explain what internet is? It's called the Backstreet Boys. I still believe in a place called home. It was Democrat Bill Clinton, Republican George Bush, and Independent Ross Perot. And we all know what happened. That's it. Game, set, match, it's over. Bill Clinton won 43% of the popular vote, while Bush won 37.5, and Perot garnered 18.9. But here's something that very few people know. An exit polling firm called Voter Research and Surveys conducted exit polls in 1992, and this is crazy. They revealed that upwards of 40% of the electorate would have voted for Ross Perot if they believed he had a chance to win. If people had voted their conscience in the 1992 election, Clinton's numbers would have gone from 43 to 31, Bush from 38 to 27, and Ross Perot would have been the president. So pre-election polling dramatically underestimated the appeal of Perot's candidacy. But the media in 1992 continued to push this spoiler slash wasted vote narrative. Third party outsider. The near impossible. It's out of his grasp. But at this point, most agree Perot needs a miracle. We will landslide this thing if the people vote their country. Had voters, the media and analysts actually understood Perot had a real shot to win the election, the entire narrative and therefore the dynamics of the election would have been completely different. So something about this story seems vaguely familiar. If Bobby's even talked about in the media, he's talked about in the exact same way. A spoiler candidate, a spoiler. Spoiler. Fringe presidential aspirants. All right, so to sum up, based on the lessons of history and the data that we just received, if people vote their conscience on November 5th, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. would be the next president of the United States. But what these lessons teach us also is that we have to believe he can win. We are steeped in a media-induced Stockholm Syndrome. We feel beholden to our captors because we're convinced they're the only options we have. So each side spends hours and hours rationalizing the behavior of their person, who we all know in our guts does not deserve to be president. We have the opportunity to do something that would completely change our country forever. But we need you now more than ever. If you can contribute five or $10 by clicking the link below, we can continue to build momentum toward the first independent president, leading the first true unity government that this country has ever seen. Thank you so much and God bless you.